And I hope uh, I'm able to present some information that will be uh, brand new and of interest to many of you. I'm going to probably avoid trying to take you step by step on a basic level through Tilt Up Design, but really focus more on what are the more recent changes to the design of this type of structure um, in the code, both ACI and the IBC, and show really the, the reason behind these changes that have occurred recently in the last couple uh, code editions, and a little bit about maybe how to implement the intent of the building code from this point forward as it is applying to tilt-up design. So I appreciate the nice introduction, SK, and let's go ahead and, and move on into our examples that I will show you how changes have occurred. But before we go, let's give a little bit of background. For instance, the slender wall method is what ACI calls this, as, a, as a, the, the walls are very slender and it is only allowed because we can actually consider um, the important aspects of second order effects that are going to apply to these walls. Eccentricities are very important. Uh, there's special limitations such as they have to be tension controlled, they, that meaning they have to have a flexural type of failure mode, not a, a compressive failure mode. The axial stress is reduced or, or, or not reduced but is uh, limited so that we uh, avoid some uh, P delta effects that could be extreme. Uh, we also have a deflection limit because these walls are very flexible and we want to avoid serviceable deflections that may actually be permanent deflections after very small earthquake or wind events. So the slender wall method, while it's very restrictive in some respects, have allowed very, very slender walls to be used, which are typically called tilt-up walls here in the west, uh, tilt wall method on the east coast, and the provisions really, let's go historically and see how they got into the code to begin with, because that's going to be important to understand why some of these changes have occurred in the last code edition. We'll also look with the ACI 318, the old code versus the new code, and also explain to you why those changes have occurred between the two codes and the older series and this most recent edition, the 2008. And also the 2011 has followed suit with the 2008 provision. Service loads, that's always a good question because the deflection limitations are limited to service loads and there's been some confusion about how or what service loads uh, should be used when you're analyzing deflected shapes. And I'll also talk about some other new code changes that are in the, the building code besides just the slender wall provisions as well. So historical development, let me give you a little bit of a background because it is fairly interesting on how these provisions did begin. First of all, tilt up construction, concrete walls tilted up into place, very thin. They may have large openings, may have small openings. Typically they have panel joints and they're limited a lot in times by just how big a panel can be for a crane to be lifting it. And they're typically cast on the slab on grade uh, and lifted into place and braced while the roof is then installed and the roof provides the wall anchorage at the roof level and the slab on grade customarily provides anchorage at the base level. Sometimes it, exceed, it extends down to a foundation for the anchorage and then bypasses the slab. But this makes little difference as long as you are taking into account the vertical height of the span of the panel. Now really the early tilt-up walls before there were provisions had limits associated with the height to thickness ratios. The building code really had indicated, and this was ACI said that in, in, in the UBC, that the height to thickness ratios were such that a 20 foot tall bearing wall was really limited to 10 inches thick, which was not very economical, but it may have been still more economical than forming that in place to tilt this up. But engineers began really finding ways to skirt around this. They began using a portion of the building code or an ACI that had a moment magnification factor in it where you could actually circumvent the height to thickness ratios of the wall by using a moment magnification which was supposed to account for the P delta effects or these second order effects. But this is really not the intent of this section of the code. But it was being used for this purpose anyway and became so common, especially in Southern California where tilt-up has really started, 
and started taking off very quickly, there was a lot of concern that this intent of this section of the code was really being misapplied. So a more definitive guideline was really needed, and it was decided by the Structural Engineers Association of Southern California in conjunction with the Southern California chapter of ACI to get into a little bit more about what would be recommended for tilt-up cylinder wall design. 